everyone. Welcome to this three-part lecture series on NACO 2022 updated guidelines on breastfeeding, PPTCT, and ART in pregnant and lactating women. In the first part, we will discuss briefly about a seminar on these updated guidelines. In the second part, we will discuss 12 case scenarios based on these updated guidelines. And in the third part of this lecture series, we will discuss about early infant diagnosis algorithm based on these updated NACO guidelines. So let's begin with first part that is a brief seminar on this updated guidelines slide which explains the risk of transmission from mother to child with or without interventions. So let's see from the bottom to the up. If the mother or a pregnant woman is strictly adherent to three antiretroviral therapy and she is not breastfeeding, the risk of transmission is just 1% or even less than 1%. If she is breastfeeding with strict adherence to ART, the risk increases marginally to just 2%. There is just 1% risk between a breastfeeding mother and a non-breastfeeding mother with strict adherence to ART. So this explains the importance of breastfeeding, which is which protects the baby from many other uh, diseases in the childhood. If she is on a short course of, with two antiretroviral therapy and breastfeeding, she is five percent. This is this is the outdated regimen which previously they used to give for uh, pregnant women. And if there is short course of one ARV and no breastfeeding, it is five to fifteen percent. And short course of NARV, if she is breastfeeding, it is 15 to 25 percent. If the mother is, or the pregnant woman is not taking any antiretroviral therapy and breastfeeding, also the risk increases to around 30 to 45 percent. So this explains the importance of antiretroviral therapy in pregnant and lactating mother. So PPT services in India has been started with a goal to achieve EMTCD, that is elimination of mother to child transmission. And the vision of this program is to have women and children who are alive and they are free from HIV. And to work towards elimination of pediatric HIV and improve maternal and newborn child health and survival in the context of HIV infection. And the key objective is to ensure the integrated parent prevention of parent-to-child transmission services delivery within the existing RCH program. So India's commitment to EMTCT is by elimin achieving elimination of mother-to-child transmission so that there is no child will be born with HIV and the mother infected mothers are kept alive with a good quality of antiretroviral therapy. So government of India has set some of the process indicators to see to this target is achieved. And this process indicators have to be maintained for at least two years. So these are the three process indicators that is more than 95% of all estimated pregnant women are registered in antenatal care and they receive at least one antenatal care checkup. And more than 95% of estimated pregnant women are tested for HIV and more than 95% of HIV positive pregnant women should be on antiretroviral therapy. So what are the essential packages? These are the same except some of the new packages that have been added in uh, new PPTCT program that is routine HIV counseling and testing of all pregnant women enrolled in antenatal care with an opt-out option. And they should ensure the involvement of spouse and other family members. And they should move from an antenatal care centric approach to a family centric approach. This is a very important uh, updated guideline. And they should provide lifelong ART as per the national guidelines to all breastfeeding and pregnant women. And regardless of her CD4 count and the clinical stage. And we should also provide care to associated conditions like other sexually transmitted infection and reproductive tract infection, TB and other opportunistic infections in the mother. And you should treat hypertension, diabetes, which increases the mortality in the mother. And we should promote institutional delivery of all HIV infected pregnant women, both in rural and urban areas. This new thing that has come in this updated guidelines is we should perform plasma viral load testing to all pregnant women between 32 to 36 weeks to determine the risk of transmission to the baby. Based on this, we are going to divide the babies or HIV exposed infant into high risk infant and a low risk infant, which I'll be discussing later on. So continuing the packages in VPTCT services, we should provide ARV prophylaxis to all HIV exposed infants as per the national guidelines. And you should provide nutritional counseling and psychosocial support to all HIV infected women. And provide counseling and support for initiation of exclusive breastfeeding within one hour after delivery as the preferred option. And we should continue exclusive breastfeeding for six months, just like in any other mother who is non-HIV infected also. And we should integrate the follow-up of HIV exposed infants in the routine healthcare services, including they should be getting all immunization services in the existing healthcare services only. We should not segregate them that they are HIV exposed and non-exposed. And we should uh, ensure that they are early diagnosed with HIV DNA PCR at six weeks of age onwards as per early infant diagnosis by NACO guidelines. And we should strengthen the community follow-up and outreach through local community networks. And we should support HIV pregnant women and their families. So government sticks to this four-pronged strategy for prevention of parent-to-child transmission. This has been present for, since the old guidelines, which has not much changed. In the prong one, their primary intervention, which targets mainly HIV negative general population through adolescent and sexually uh, health and reproductive program for adolescent girls. And in prong two, they will uh, target mainly HIV positive non-pregnant women. They will counsel regarding the family planning in them. And the counseling happens in ICTC, but more importantly at ART centers. 
and community service centers. And in prong three, they are HIV targeting mainly HIV positive and pregnant women, where they will be co concentrating on maternal to child prevention of maternal to child transmission. And in prong four, they are HIV positive mothers with a lactating baby. They will mainly well, focus on care and support of the mother and the baby. And we should link all the HIV positive pregnant mother and the lactating mother and the neonate to the ICTC center. So what are the risk factors that increase the transmission of HIV from parent to the child? So there are obstetrics and maternal factors and infant related factors. Obstetric factors and maternal factors are recent HIV infection in the mother, high viral load and advanced HIV disease, associated other sexually transmitted infections, and obstetric procedural deliveries like forceps, vacuum delivery, prolonged duration of labor, and invasive fetal monitoring like scalp electrodes, scalp pH electrodes, and other things, and maternal malnutrition, and any other conditions of the maternal breast like sore nipple, breast abscess, and mastitis, this will increase the transmission risk. Infant related factors are very few like preterm and low birth weight and oral ulcers or thrush in the baby and mixed feeding is known to increase the risk of HIV transmission from mother to the child. So what are the interventions during pregnancy that are given to all pregnant women is we should provide information to all pregnant women about HIV. Antenatal visits are a good opportunity to counsel about PPTCT and you should start ART in all pregnant women who are positive that will help in prevention of parent to child transmission. And referral for viral load testing between 32 to 36 weeks of pregnancy and to determine the risk of parent to child transmission. Based on that, we will select the ARV prophylaxis based on their risk categories, categorization like high risk and low risk. And we should counsel for institutional delivery so that interventions are correctly undertaken and so that no child or mother is missed. And we should counsel on infant weaning practices and ARV prophylaxis for the child and follow safe obstetric practices like less use of uh, procedures like vacuum or forceps deliveries and less prolonged duration of labor. And based on the infant feeding options available, if you are, the baby can be on exclusive breastfeeding or exclusive replacement feeding. Exclusive breastfeeding, as we all know, it means that giving only breast milk, no other liquids or solids, even water also. Whereas drops and syrups containing vitamins are permitted. And it provides infant with all required nutrients and immunological factors. Like in other babies who are not in, exposed, it should be started within one hour, both in normal vaginal delivery or seasonal delivery. And it decreases the risk of other infections. And it should be recommended as a preferred choice in developing countries like India, wherein the risk of other infections are very high, like respiratory tract infection, diarrheal diseases are very high, you should counsel all pregnant mother to choose exclusive breastfeeding over exclusive replacement feeding. So exclusive replacement feeding is a process of feeding baby who is not on breastfeeding with a diet that provides baby its nutrient requirements. It can be either a formula feeding, like infant formulas or dairy milk or any uh, animal milk. And this feed, if at all chosen, should be prepared in a very hygienic way and should be given with spoon and katori and not with any uh, bottle feeding should be advised. So what is this with mixed feeding? So mixed feeding is known to increase the risk of transmission by causing allergy in the gut and it should be avoided if at all possible. And when exclusive breastfeeding is not possible for any reasons like maternal sickness or twins or any other maternal psychiatric illnesses, the healthcare workers should be reassured that the maternal strict adherence to maternal ART will reduce the risk of postnatal HIV transmission even in the context of mixed feeding as well. So don't totally, if the mother is not able to give one to two times breastfeeding, don't totally stop breastfeeding and switch over to formula feeding, you can still counsel mothers that giving any breast milk is better than not feeding at all. So the healthcare providers and counselors, they should be well trained in reaching out to the parents to make right decision and support them in implementing their preferred choice. So always I advise to go for exclusive breastfeeding. It is easily accessible and it saves a lot of uh, uh, money and in, prevents babies from a lot of any infections. So what does current national guidelines say about infant feeding and HIV exposed infant is? Always, always go for exclusive breastfeeding in less than six less than six months old. And beyond six months of age, breastfeeding should be continued as you introduce complementary feeding. And breastfeeding should only stop once a nutritionally adequate and safe diet without breast milk can be provided to the child. And mothers living with HIV should at least feed for 12 months. And you may continue up to 24 months like a general population. There is no difference between a non-HIV exposed infant and an HIV exposed infant if the mother is strictly adherent to ART and she follows the ART guidelines. And if HIV positive mother plans to return to her workplace, she can be assured that a shorter duration of breastfeeding is better than never breastfeeding initiation at all. And breastfeeding is safe by giving strict adherence to ART and ARV prophylaxis to the baby. And without optimal adherence and a suppressed maternal viral, with optimal adherence to ART and better suppressed maternal viral load, there remains no difference between infant feeding guidelines in HIV exposed infant versus non-exposed infant. So there is hardly any difference in uh, breastfeeding recommendation if the mother is strictly adherence to ART. So what ART to be given, I will discuss in the upcoming slides. And mother also should follow uh, protected sex practices and always, always adherence to ART should be checked whenever you see any HIV exposed infant in your follow-up clinics, always, always 
check for strict ART attendance. If they are not linked to ICTC or ART center, kindly uh, send them for ART center. So what ARV government has proposed for all pregnant women is the newly introduced FDC, that is triple leg ART regimen, should be started in the, all pregnant and lactating women, regardless of the CD4 count or clinical stage, both for their own health and also to prevent vertical transmission. So presently, the what regimen is suggested is TLD regimen, that is tenofovir, lamivudine, and dolutegravir. This is the regimen that is prescribed for all pregnant women and lactating women, and this should be continued for lifelong. And ARV prophylaxis for in, in infant exposed to HIV mother is either a single drug ARV prophylaxis is advised with low risk of HIV transmission for six weeks and dual drug prophylaxis is advised for infant with high risk of transmission. So what is high risk and low risk? I will come in the next slide. And duration of prophylaxis in low risk infant, it is six weeks regardless of the type of feeding, whether it is exclusive breastfeeding or exclusive replacement feeding. Whereas in high risk infants, the duration of prophylaxis is six weeks if it is exclusive replacement feeding and 12 weeks if the baby is on breastfeeding. So it will get clear in the upcoming slides. So if ART is given preg into pregnant women and lactating women, it reduces the maternal viral load. And if the ART administered to the mother will get loaded to the fetus and it will prevent the transmitted virions from replicating in the fetus. And it also improves the overall health of the mother that will result in a healthy baby. And it reduces the risk of transmission from mother to the HIV exposed infant also during lactation. So this is the regimen that is given to all pregnant women and breastfeeding women. That is tenofovir, lamivudine and dolutegravir. It comes as a fixed drug combination of 300 mg of uh, tenofovir and lamivudine and 50 mg of dolutegravir. It should be given once daily. It is given in any HIV infection, HIV-1, HIV-2 or HIV-1 and 2 co-infection. And even women who are previously exposed to single-dose nevirapin or women who are co-infected with TB or hepatitis, for everyone, it is made simplified that you should switch over to TLD regimen irrespective of whatever regimen you were giving previously. So pregnant women should be educated about benefits and risks of these dolotic gravir and they should make an informed choice and you should send everyone to uh, ART center to start it on this regimen. And if uh, during labor, what happens if the mother comes directly in labor, the labor room nurse should offer a bedside counseling and she should do for HIV screening test, either by whole blood finger prick test in the delivery room or labor ward. And if it comes reactive, it should be initi immediately initi initiate ART as per guideline. So even if she comes in labor, you give the same drug that is TLD. And you should ensure uh, send a sample of HIV confirmation for ICTC. If in ICTC it comes positive, then you continue the regimen and he should be linked to ART center and collect blood for CD4 count and if you continue regimen. If in ICTC it comes negative, you can stop ART after the collecting the report from ART, ICTC. So any mother who presents with active labor with no prior ART, start the same regimen TLD and continue even postmortem time, you should continue with the same regimen, this TLD regimen. So what is mean by low risk and high risk infant based on the mother's profile? So high risk infant is your, your I will come with the high risk infant in the next slide. So what do you mean by low risk infant is infant in who want a mother whose viral load is suppressed and she is adherent to ART. So when you do a viral load testing between 32 to 36 weeks of gestation, if the viral copies are less than 1000 copies per ml, so they are considered as low risk. So what is the prophylaxis you give in low risk infants? So we have to give nevirapin. And in zero wedding is used in situations where nevirapin is not effective. That is infants who are born to mother who are HIV-2 positive or HIV-1 and 2 co-infection or previously they have received a single dose nevirapin. Infant born to a mother who had received a single dose nevirapin in earlier pregnancy or delivery in based on previous guidelines. And infant born to a mother she, whom she is on a protease inhibitor based ARP regimen, then there will be resistance to this uh, nevirapin. So we use zero wedding. So how much weeks the prophylaxis should be given to the uh, neonate? So it should be given for six weeks of age. So low risk, six weeks. So when syrup zidovidin is not available, we can use syrup lopinavir ritonavir combination. But lopinavir ritonavir combination is not used in first two weeks after birth. First two weeks after birth, we can use nevirapin syrup and then switch over to uh, lopinavir ritonavir combination because of poor drug handling and elimination in the first two weeks. So we don't use lopinavir ritonavir combination. So what do you mean by high risk infants? High risk infants are who are born to HIV positive mother and not on ART and maternal viral load is not done from pregnancy till delivery and maternal viral load is not suppressed. That is, if it is more than 1000 copies per ml and my mother is newly identified HIV positive within six weeks of delivery, then all these infants are considered as high risk. Here in high risk, we have to give dual prophylaxis. One thing, the difference is dual prophylaxis and dual type of uh, duration of treatment based on the type of feeding. So if it is exclusive replacement feeding, only give till six weeks. If it is exclusive breastfeeding, give till 12 weeks of age. So dual prophylaxis, that is nevirapine and zidovidine and Two type, based on the two types of uh, feeding, it is the duration of prophylaxis differs. Exclusive replacement feeding, six weeks. Exclusive breastfeeding till 12 weeks of age. 
and uh, as i told when syrup zidovudine is not available first for first 14 days syrup nevirapine can be used and after 14 days you switch over to lopinavir ritonavir combination if both syrup zidovudine and nevirapine both are not available so another alternative option is we have a pediatric uh, formulation that is zedelan combination that is zidovudine lamivudine and nevirapine combination tablet fdc comes fixed drug combination we can use this as a third choice so what is the dose of uh, nevirapine we give so it is based on the weight and duration of treatment where we are giving so in less than 2 kg baby it is 2 ml per kg once daily and from 2 kg to 2.5 kg it is 10 mg once daily and more than 2.5 kg it is 15 mg once daily so the syrup comes in a dose of 10 mg per ml and more than 6 weeks to 6 months it is 20 mg 6 months to 9 months 30 and more than 9 months and 40 mg so this duration comes only when you later identify that at 3 months 4 months when you identify that baby is exposed to hiv and is not on any airway prophylaxis so that time we start treatment until the baby gets diagnosed when we send sample and baby gets diagnosed that time we use uh, this treatment so nevirapine it is once daily whereas uh, zidovudine it is used twice daily dosage so less than 2 kg it is 5 mg per dose twice daily and 2 to 2.5 kg 10 mg more than 2.5 kg 15 mg so the syrup strength is same 10 mg 10 mg per ml and even nevirapine also comes as 10 mg per ml so dosage is different and it is twice daily so remember z z looks like 2 so it is two times daily and nevirapine nevirapine is one time daily so syrup lopinavir ritonavir combination it is used when infant prophylax certain situations it should be used only after 14 days when syrup zidovudine is not available then it should be used only after uh, 14 days of life mm -hmm. so if zidovudine syrup is not available then syrup nevirapine should be used in uh, first 14 days then switch over to Uh, lopinavir ritonavir combination so lopinavir ritonavir combination comes as 80 mg of lopinavir and 20 mg per ml of uh, ritonavir so this also based on birth to 2 weeks we don't use from 2 weeks to 4 weeks based on the duration and more than 4 weeks it is again based on the weight of the child that dosage changes so when should you initiate arv prophylaxis it should be started immediately after birth or at first encounter so even though the baby comes after second day third day it should be started even more than 72 hours have passed it should be started so the efficacy of perinatal transmission will become lower so even it will prevent transmission during breastfeeding also and how long should you continue it should be continued at least for a minimum of 6 weeks based on the risk of the baby and based on if it is a high risk baby and exclusive breastfeeding it should be continued up to 12 weeks as well so this is to summarize infant with the low risk of transmission whether regardless of feeding whether it is exclusive breastfeeding or exclusive replacement feeding 6 weeks so if it is an infant with high risk of transmission now it differs based on type of feeding if it is exclusive breastfeeding child it is 12 weeks and exclusive replacement feeding we have to give 6 weeks is enough whereas an infant with high risk uh, prophylaxis high risk we give dual prophylaxis that you should know so how does the specific intervention uh, help during infancy so what all you should do is during infancy whenever you encounter such child you should observe for signs and symptoms of hiv infection and all hiv exposed infant once they come back at 6 weeks of age during immunization you should always start with cotrimoxazole prophylaxis and follow standard immunization schedule like in any other child and they should be called for routine well baby visits like any other child and you should attach them to uh, ictc for early infant diagnosis as per naco guidelines and at 18 month visit you should do an hiv antibody testing so that the baby will be either labeled as hiv positive or negative based on antibody testing so how does art reduces the risk of parental child transmission is it will reduces viral replication and maternal viral load and as we already discussed it loads the fetus that will prevent the virions which are transplacentally transmitted from replicating in the mother it will improve the health of the mother by treating maternal infection and also it will protect the hiv exposed infant from hiv infection and uh, overall the mother of health of the mother will be improved and she will have good weight gain so after all uh, this 